My name is Lori Valdez, and I'm from um, San Jose, California. And I'm here, I want to say thank you for implementing this board, first of all. Me, myself, because I know a few people on there, I'm kind of hopeful, but I'm really not confident that any change of significant matter will impact the lives of the children left behind, left fatherless. I want you guys to take a look. We talk about California is the deadliest state, okay? Children are traumatized from these police killings. These are children, and I, I want each of you to see it, so I'm going to ask somebody to take that so you guys can see the faces, okay? These children are not invisible. They're very much alive and here, and yet nobody ever addresses it because it's too political. When is it too political to ignore children suffering the trauma and the aftermath and nobody addressing it? Do you guys know, do any of you know that trauma, what trauma does to a child? Do any of you know that in California, none of our teachers are trauma informed taught, so therefore a child like my son Josiah up here gets upset or acts out because of the trauma and he does get angry, he hurt, whatever. They will punish him for hurting instead of helping him, therefore making him a statistic. That's not happening. We need to stop focusing on protecting adult grown men and people who already should know right or wrong. They're not capable of doing the right thing. They are bad role models for our children. We need to focus on the ones left behind. These are little people who have to live in fear the rest of their lives because an officer claimed he acted in fear. There's no reason why a man should be acting in fear if he knows his community. Killing people is not the way to go and not, and as far as my, my case, four years ago I was forced into this nightmare of a hell. I've been living, seeing my children suffer, especially my son, without any kind of help. We don't get counseling. We don't get help for anything. We're ignored, and I'm tired of being ignored. My son and my daughter and all these little children, they should be, legislation needs to push to protect the children because they're the ones that are our future leaders, and they're the ones that are going to end up broken people who are going to resent police officers and want to become the police officers with that badge so they could go around killing people. I don't want that for my son. And I'm asking all of you to look into the case of Antonio Guzman Lopez and tell me why, four years later, nobody is concerned the fact that they've never released the videos or any information on our case. Yet my son is suffering. Why? What is the cover up? Why not? My children are never going to heal because we don't know what happened that day. And it is a responsibility of every adult here that they have to protect our children first. Children come before adults all the time. This village needs to protect them. Thank you. Hello, everybody. I just want to thank everyone and my God first for allowing me to be here to speak my truth. Um, my name is Kimberly Phillips. I'm here on uh, from Silicon Valley Debug on behalf of my dead son, Aaron James Phillips, also known as AJ. On August 15, August 10, 2015, there was a call for help at my house. The police um, showed up because my son was threatening suicide. Um, I was their first point of contact, despite the lies that they told in the press release. Um, I yes, there's several lies here, and I'm gonna try to get it before the three minutes because I never had the opportunity to speak the truth as, as being a witness. When those officers arrived. Um, they were nowhere near the front of my house. They parked next to my neighbor's house. They automatically took their weapons out, and I saw that. So I tried to approach them, and I was told to stop. And I, I was begging them, please don't kill my son. Please don't kill my son. He needs help. Not even seconds later, I hear my son come out. I can't see him, and all he says is what? You know, and the next thing you know, they say, put your hands up, put your hands up, put your hands up and then the bullets go off right past my face as I'm screaming bloody murder when they stopped I tried to run to him 
and I was ordered to the ground at gunpoint. The only reason I stopped is because my daughter behind me said, Mom, Mom, she didn't want me to get shot. So I said, oh my God, did you just kill my son? You know what the officer's response was? I don't know, ma'am. I can't see. I don't know, ma'am. I can't see. So, later we were taken away. And when we were taken away, they knew my baby was dead. But they didn't tell me he was dead. They lied and said that he ran back in the house and they never shot him. And he shot himself. And let me tell you something, God is not allowing that because my God done showed me the truth. There is blood spatter all outside the windows of my house. There was blood spatter on the cement. There's blood spatter on my screen door and it bleeds to this day and I refuse to wash it off because that's his truth. I gave them access to my digital camera. I got four hours missing data. Yeah. Never had four hours missing data since August 10th, 2015. Yeah. Yeah. I have filed complaints with internal affairs. None of this exists to them that they acted within protocol. Okay? Now, if you didn't shoot my son, why do I got four hours missing data? They say they never touched my camera. I had forensic. I spent thousands of dollars to find out proof that they did, and I submitted all this. I showed them to the face they lie, and what do they do? They acted within policy. So I'm here to tell you, I even filed a department with the Department of Justice. I get letters back, I'm sorry ma'am, your son killed himself. I said, what about the blood? What about my four hours missing data? What about the projectile y'all say you have, I found? What about the injuries to his legs you never told me about? Why didn't, I want you to picture this. When I fought so hard to get that police report, I fought hard. Yeah. When I fought so hard to get his autopsy, I was told by Officer Rosa Vega he had one injury to his head, nothing else. I find out he has injuries to the leg, defects on his pants. I was told a dog came in the house, and that's what those are, postmortem um, dog bites. I'm telling you, no, that's gunshot wounds. And let me tell you something. Picture this, my baby dead with his eyes wide open, pants down, laying there wide away while they're cleaning up. And I want to ask you, if this, th this is what the police officer's Bill of Rights does. It allows them to commit murder and clean it up because there's no accountability. I want to know, if there, was they acting in, in, within policy while there's on their hands and knees cleaning up my son's blood? Yeah. Deleting footage? Right, yeah. Pushing my camera up? Come on now. And if I file complaints with IA, IPA, everywhere, and no one's done nothing for me or my family, where does one go? Y'all sending me the wrong message. Okay, that's why we need to dismantle the officer's bill of rights, because this allows them to kill people and, then, and, and lie and say it's a suicide. This is corruption at its finest. And when the Department of Justice, I got a restraining order from the FBI even. Okay? The FBI won't even help me. Nobody. So remember my son's name and remember my face. Aaron James Phillips. AJ. I am Aaron James Phillips. So there you go. Y'all murdered my baby. Aaron James My name is Dina Abello. I'm the wife of James Nate Greer. We were together for 25 years, and he was killed by Hayward and Bart Police on May 23, 2014. There was over 20 officers there, is caught on video, and he was pulled over for what the lieutenant said was driving goofy. So I see that you guys are doing this little form. The police are going to go and put their little data in there and stuff like that. This is what I call due diligence. You guys are doing this to suffice what you think that we want to hear. I want, I want to be able to access that data. Let me go online and pull it up. I don't want the addresses. I don't care where they live. I don't want to know anything like that. Put on there that this was a stop. Why? Because he was driving goofy? The 911 call says black male driving. Didn't say nothing about driving goofy. My husband was Latino. Where does it say on there that he, he ends up in a death? 
You guys want us to call the independent investigators. The district attorney hires somebody. You got IA. This is, this is a conflict of interest. I don't trust those people. They're on the paycheck. They're getting paid. I would not trust them to do it. They've done investigations, and they continue to do investigations. They did with my husband. And in Alameda County, during the time when my husband was killed, he wasn't shot. He was tased. He was choked. He was beaten. He was tased multiple times at the same time by a lieutenant, who knows better, in the face, choked. His head was stomped on. A baton was shoved under his throat while his head was being stepped on. And seven officers sat on his body while they choked him. They said he's turning blue. He's not breathing. They sat there, and they watched him die. It's on video. They didn't know that they were being videotaped because BART police had the body camera, not Hayward. When Hayward police walked up to the BART officer, he said, are you, are you recording? The officer said, no, I'm not. And he said, you're flashing red. He says, oh, I've been, this is having problems with all day. And he said, cut it off. And it went, shh. Two other videos pop up. BART officers also had these videos on. They are on the other side, and they're saying, his lips are blue. They said, let's see what kind of mood he's in. Put a mood ring on him. I bet you it turns black. They knew he was dying. I watched my husband take his last three breaths. They stood there and watched him take his last three breaths while they made jokes and they made fun of him. They didn't check his pulse. See, the fire department and the ambulance was right there, ready to go. They wouldn't let him on the scene. They waited for him to die before the ambulance was allowed and the fire department was allowed to come. No one checked his pulse. The BART officer that pulled him down, who initiated his death, had CPR training the day before did nothing, absolutely nothing. So this little thing, if you can make it public record, people can access it, do put on there where if it, if it does say there's an in-custody death, it's flagged so that someone can in, do an investigation, not from the district attorney's office, someone else, someone that we can trust. Then you'll build trust with the community, then you get your transparency, and then maybe we can talk eye to eye. Thank you.